Why do I need? Why do you need to learn oxidation states? Well, it is a quick check to see if something exists, and by something I mean a chemical. For example, sodium chloride has only one chloride ion. Oxidation states will help you determine that. Also, it gives you an unambiguous identification of a chemical. For example, iron chloride. Well, is it iron 2 chloride, which is found in tablets for iron deficiency, or iron 3 chloride, which makes the ends of your fingers go numb for about an hour? I made that mistake ages ago. I was a little scared. Peripheral neuralgia, that's what it's called. And another reason is it shows electron movements, which is handy for batteries, electrolytic cells, and maybe you've devoted your entire life to electron movements, like that guy. So there are six or seven rules, depending on how you count them, but let's clear up one thing first of all. Oxidation numbers are Roman numerals, and we're dealing with oxidation states. For example, plus five, plus seven. And don't forget that you have to have the plus or the minus first, or the IV won't give you the point. All right, this seems to be a whole bunch of elements, and elements have an oxidation state of zero. That's the first rule. All elements have an oxidation state of zero. What are elements? Are the periodic table that's full of elements. Next rule. Well, it seems that the sum of these oxidation states is the same as the charge on the ions. And if there is no charge, it's zero. So the sum of the oxidation states in a molecule or ion is the charge on the molecule or ion. Next rule. It seems that oxygen has an oxidation state of minus two when it's in a compound. Oh, so that means carbon's plus four, isn't it, I suppose? There is an exception to that rule that the IB wants you to know except in peroxides, where oxygen has a minus one oxidation number. And this is the most common example, hydrogen peroxide. Next. Well, it seems that hydrogen in a compound has an oxidation state of plus one. And you know what? I don't have to write all those numbers every time. I can just write them once if I choose to. But don't put plus 2, plus 4, minus 8. Don't add up all those numbers. You have to just put them once, not the sum of them. So hydrogen in a compound has an oxidation state of plus 1. Oh, and look, you can kind of fill in the missing ones a little bit there as well with the rules that you know already. Phosphorus plus 5. Okay. There is an exception to this one as well. And the exception is that if the hydrogen is bonded to a metal, then the oxidation state is going to be minus one. Notice how oxidation states are kind of pretending everything is ionic. That's the secret to their success. Next rule. It seems that fluorine is always minus one in a compound. I'm not going to write all the numbers down. And here's a little star. I don't often get to say this. I think that that's actually the truth. I think that there are no exceptions to that, and that is actually true. Ionic bonding, that's not true. Helium's unreactive, that's not true. The hydrogen electrode, Half cell is 0 0.00 volts. That's not true. It's zero volts. But I think that fluorine is always minus one in a compound. Nearly done. So those are group one, two, and 13 metals. And there's a definite pattern there. Group one is plus one. Group two plus two. Group 13 plus three. Those are the oxidation states in a compound. Of course, if they're on their own, it would be zero, because all elements are zero.
And the last rule, halogens, eh, they're probably minus one. Fluorine is definitely minus one, but the others, probably minus one. What the hell does that mean, Thornley? Well, take a look at these. Yeah, minus one all the way through, but with HClO4, you're going to come unstuck. I know there's a rule for hydrogen and oxygen. Chlorine minus one, you know that doesn't work. So chlorine's the one that's flexible. That's going to actually be plus seven. Is chlorine going to be minus one here? Chlorine monofluoride? No, it's not. That's going to be plus one. The halogens are only probably minus one except for fluoride, which is minus one. So what about this one then? Which one am I going to make the negative one oxidation state? Well, probably chlorine. That loves electrons the most, and oxidation states are pretending everything's behaving like an ionic compound. Some tricky ones. Vanadium nitrate. There is no rule for nitrogen or vanadium. So how's that possible? Well, hopefully you remember that nitrate is minus one. And from that, you can work out that vanadium is plus one in this case. Copper sulfate pentahydrate. Well, those five waters you can consider independently of the copper sulfate. And for God's sake, don't write them all down. So what about the copper sulfate? There's no rule for copper or sulfur, so how can you do it? Well, hopefully you remember that sulfate has a two minus charge. And from that, you can work out that the copper, the copper must be plus two. And this awful looking thing here, that's not in the IB, ClO4. Is it minus one, minus two, minus three? Even then it's wrong. It should be one minus, two minus, or three minus. What on earth is it? You're going to have to give me a bit more information. Minus nine? I never heard of a minus nine iron. You know what? If I tell you that sodium bonds with the ClO4 like that, there's a rule for sodium. There's a rule for oxygen. Ah, so I now I know that ClO4 must have a negative charge. I can work out that the iron has a two plus charge, but an oxidation state of plus two. So a couple of upsetting ones. This is methanol. The sum is zero, minus two for the oxygen, plus one for the hydrogen. Oh, carbon can be zero? It can indeed. Elements can be zero even within a molecule. And then we have propane, plus one for hydrogen. It's not with a metal, after all, which leaves carbon as a negative fraction. You know what? That's all right as well. 